Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to process user input. So in the previous lecture we tried submitting information, but if we come into our Django administration, we can see no information about React has been added. The reason for that is we did not actually provide code to process that info. So I am within views.py file, which is located in this meetings, meetings app. So in here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change how this form view function actually reacts. So first of all, I'm going to create an if statement. Now, the if statement is going to have an else clause as well. First, I'm going to give you the concept, uh, the conceptual part, and that is if the request is post, this means that the user has clicked the submit button and that we process the user input if we end up in the else clause that that means that the request has to be get and in that case the user has not submitted the form yet in other words a get request means that the user simply wants to retrieve the form so they can see it and fill it in and in that case we just want to render the template so first off i'm going to say if a request dot dot method is equal to post so this request parameter that we have it has all the information about uh, the form that the user is going to submit all the information is within there we are talking about the method if the method is post there is only one case that the method is going to be post and that case is whenever the user clicks on the submit button or the create button then when the user clicks on it what do we want to do we want to grab the user entered data and extract it and create a new object for, uh, for this data and then we want to store that data into the database we can use our model form factory for it uh, which is going to help us uh, with storing data which we retrieve from the user so i'm going to say form is going to be equal to um meeting for so meeting for and in here okay i just have to provide meeting for now in here how can we extract the user data the user data is located within request.post so all the form will be submitted to this meeting form and from there it is going to go to the database but we need to save these changes as well but before saving it we need to talk about a little talk a little bit about validating so validating the user input data is a very important step uh, it checks whether all the necessary fields are filled in whether they contain valid data like an actual number for an integer field or a valid date for a date field you should never forget to validate your input field before you save it into database not just because you might end up with uh, database errors but also because of security and in here i'm going to say if form dot is valid if the form is valid then what do i want to do i want to grab the form and i want to save it now in the case that the form has been correctly filled we save the form which creates a meeting instance for us and saves it into the database so after this call there should be a new row in the database with a new meeting then we want to redirect uh, the user to the home page so the user fills out the form create uh, clicks on the create button the form is created then we want to redirect the user to the home page so the user can see that whether or not that that meeting has been added now the way that we can redirect the user is that we are going to say return redirect it is it has already been uh, imported by django it if by this views.py file if it is not there make sure from django the shortcuts you import redirect as well and in here we just want to pass in where do we want to redirect the user it's going to be in the to the welcome page now um if the request is post this is everything that we want to do but what if the request is not post if the request is not post what does that mean it means that the user is simply wanting to take a look at the form so we are just going to call the meeting form which we we have created right here 
It means that we just want to show to the user that what is the form, what are the inputs, and whether or not the user wants to fill them in. We just want to show the form inputs based on the model, uh, based on the meeting model that we have in our database. Now, this return render, this render template function, it is outside of our if statement. The reason for that is this actually handles the Git request. This shows the form inputs, but what actually handles the page itself, the form.html web page or template itself, is this one. So whether or not the request is post or get, we just want to show the page first. So if the user uh, wants to fill out the form first, the user has to enter um, the URL for that page. This is going to handle the URL for that page. I'm going to save everything and um, let's head back to our form. Let's just refresh this page. I'm going to, you know what, I'm just going to go to, let's just go to the home page. I'm going to go to the home page. I'm going to refresh the page. Uh, let's go to the form. So it was meetings. Uh, meeting slash form. Just click on it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add React.js, uh, let's say on this date in this room, and let's click on it. And now we can see that the form has been added. If I come into Django interface, we don't even have to come in here because React.js has been added. And it is on this date in this room, on uh, room number on this floor. React.js. And if I refresh the Django admin, there we go. React.js has been added. So what we did throughout this lecture was just add another, just handle the post request. We just handled it. We cleaned out the data. We handled it. Now, just to show you some validation of data for which we just said if form is valid, uh, there are some validation that are going to be handled by the browser. And I'm gonna give. I'm gonna tell you the difference, and why sh you should never rely on f form validation. So if you just click on create, it says please fill out this field. If you fill it out, for example, CSRF, and you click this text, this pop up. This is browser, right? So I'm gonna I'm not, I'm gonna give it a date, but I'm gonna change the format. So I'm gonna say 01 01 2100. And then the rest is going to be the same. So if I click on it, if I click create, what does it say? It says, please, it says enter a valid date. Now this is going to come from this if form is valid. This is called the validation of the form. We are checking and we are trying to validate the form. So now let's try to add, um, um, uh, try to add a correct date. So it's going to be, uh, 2030.06.19 and let's say we try to add something let me just take a look at something in here in the models.py we specify the default is going to be 1 in here and in here we can see that the duration could be 1 we have not actually specified any limit on how long the duration could be so I'm not going to do anything about it but what about this time what if I, I do not provide time in this format? What if I just provide 10? What happens in that case? If I run it, if I say create, it says enter a valid time. So with this, our lecture comes to an end. We can see that we got some browser validation or front end validation. And we have also grabbed, uh, we have also ended up with some back end validation which we did. Now in the next, the next lecture is going to be the final lecture where we uh, actually work with the functionality of this application. And that is going to be a slightly, like a little bit more advanced than what we have talked about so far. And I'm not going to explain it in so much detail. I'm just going to explain the important parts. But that lecture just shows you, the next lecture will, is going to show you how you can create custom validation for Django forms. So that's it for this lecture. See you in the next one.